remember when you were 16 years old and what you wanted to be? I wanted to be a marketing guru, and I would do whatever it took to get there. In high school, I had internships, marketing internships, one after another. I went, then went to college, and I majored in communications. When I majored in communications, I took a part-time job in the marketing department of a small startup. And at this startup, um, I basically did everything from website design to um, basically anything. And then I graduated in 2008, and um, they offered me a full-time job at a pub, uh, as a product marketing associate. And as this product marketing associate, um, in 2008, I was so stoked. I was so happy that I got to my dream. But like I had a dream, I had this dream, and but I was still so unhappy. Even though I had a job in the worst recession of what they call like the worst recession in economic history, in global history, I was still so unhappy. And I'll tell you guys all a secret. I had this lingering feeling that I needed to do something. I knew that this something that I had to do, and it had to do with impact. So let me talk about the definition of impact. So I started looking more into this definition of impact. And it means to have a strong effect on someone or something. To have a strong effect on someone or something. I launched my career in marketing, but it didn't have an effect on anyone but myself. So I think this definition of impact, there's still more to it. You have to think about it. It's, it's about selflessness. To have a strong effect on someone or something other than yourself. You want to think about, to have a good impact, you need to think selflessly. And so let me tell you a story. There was one day, my boss came up to me and he was like, here's an HTML book, how to learn HTML. And, and he was like, we need a website. And I was like, OK. And I started to learn how to code. And it was then I realized that I started spending all my time developing this website and spending all my time studying web usability. And in this process, I realized that web usability, if I did small tweaks to the website, it would make the user experience so much better. And with and making that user experience so much better, it led to greater sales on our site. Um, we had customers calling in and saying, hey, we, learned, we saw your product, and uh, we want to know about, more about it. We had lead generation coming through our contact us form, and I was ecstatic. This was my first taste of impact. And impact starts small. So this is when I realized that coding was my shtick. And I knew that I could have more impact in coding. And I wanted to take it to the point where like, I could have greater impact using coding. So I started looking into a way of changing careers. And when I started looking into seeing if I can go to any four-year credit school, um, this is what people said to me. <laughs> oh, sorry. I think it's missing a slide. But OK. So basically, they said to me, um, like you, you basically, they said to me that basically you um, can't join a four-year course, or you can't get a graduate, or um, you can't get a bachelor's degree because another bachelor's degree because um, you can't get another bachelor's degree because you already have one, and they only accept people who don't have a degree yet. Basically, they come to priority, and um, because of that. Sorry, I'm like totally nervous now. <laughs> but um, they, because of that, I had to go look and to see like how I can get a master's. So that was my next step. And back then, they didn't have um, choices like Coursera and all these other online classes that I could take CS. So the next step was to get a master's in computer science. So I started looking to that, and it was just this long line, long list of undergraduate classes that I needed to take, and. Um, and then I needed to figure out how to take these undergrad classes, because I obviously couldn't get another undergrad degree in computer science. So what I ended up doing is I found the UC Extension program. And through this extension program, I was able to take these classes. The problem with that is that I needed to get, um, I was not a UC student. I was an extension student. So basically, I came after all the students that after the wait list, and I had to wait. And I tried to find a way to get around it. I started pestering. Um, I started pestering professors. I started stalking them after class. 
um, and trying to get to see if I could get a pre-approval because I was like really scared that I wasn't going to get into these classes. Obviously, I didn't have that kind of charm. But I do remember the first time and the first professor when I asked him to have a signature. He looked at me, double chinned and all, and he was like, what classes have you taken? And I was like, I haven't taken any classes. He was like, well, what languages do you know? And I said, well, I know HTML and CSS. And oh, yeah, I did take that C-sharp class uh, online. Um, and then here's the kicker question. He was like, what did you major in college? And I was like, uh, communications. <laughs> That's what he sort of showed me. But this was the first and beginning of all these types of looks. All these looks, um, I realized that going from a non-technical field to a technical field was not common. It was obviously super rare, and he was, he was actually really scared. But anyways, long story short, um, I aced his class, and I ended up becoming a tutor for all of his other classes. Uh, this paved the way for other extension students. Um, there were other extension students that came after me, and they obviously didn't have to go through looks like this. Uh, but they were more, more aware of like, being able to get through and uh, being able to take these undergraduate classes. Moreover, a lot of these extension students actually became admitted to the master's program as well. They ended up becoming teacher's assistants, um, and after being become teacher's assistants, they graduated with their master's, and some today are UC, uh, UCSD computer science lecturers. So impact can be so small, so small, that it can be unclear until you look back. So I got the, the belief in the professors. That was one thing, right? Then I needed to get internships. So I remember talking to this engineer at the job fair, and this engineer starts asking me about my resume, and he was like, what did you do? Um, what classes have you taken? Um, what languages do you know? And then he asked, what program are you in? And I was like, obviously, I wasn't in a program. So I said, I'm not a UC student. You know, I'm an extension student. But uh, I'm, and I pointed to the top of my resume, and I said, I'm pursuing a, a degree, in, a master's degree in computer science. And he says, wait one minute. He's like, let me talk to my career and see if you qualify as an intern. So back in the day, at that time, when I was trying to be a computer science internship, um, it wasn't common that people without, without degrees or without, without being in a program could get an internship. So one, I was not a UC student at a four-year accredited school. And two, I was not in an official program. So I, saw, I heard rejections. I probably had went through rejections about 40 to 50 times that year. Um, before someone actually gave me a chance. And when they gave me a chance, um, I had an internship, and then after internship, after internship. So like I said, impact can be small, but it can be unclear. And what was unclear here is that now you can go to a job fair, and you don't have to have like the background of computer science. And you could say, hey, can I get an interview? At as a computer a software engineer, although I'm doing this and this, and I only do websites on the side. And now it's, the recruiters are more likely to look at the potential of you. And if you can pass those technical interviews, you can pass those technical interviews. So that's when, so fast forward, I wor started working at Facebook. And at Facebook, um, you get to choose whatever team you want to be on. And I knew the first thing that I needed to do is do, have impact, right? And how can I have impact? I'm obviously a woman. So I wanted to join an engineering team full of just males. And I knew Instagram would be the way to do this. So Facebook acquired Instagram, and there were only 13 people there total. So the engineering team was super small. Um, and a manager once said to me, all you need is one woman to join your team. Two is even better. Once you have one, it's so much easier to convince a woman to join your team. And that's what I did. So I joined, I joined Instagram, and um, I joined Instagram as their first female engineer. And two years later, we have a point to have a female engineer on every one of our subteams. We've not only hit that goal, but obviously grown to more. So now as an Instagram engineer, um, I have a greater goal and mission that I'm working towards with the team. And Instagram's mission is to connect the community at, to the world as it happens. And the way that we do this is one way is, oh, I forgot to say, <laughs> one point of my, my um, 
about joining a team full of women is that if you strive for impact, you will directly make an effect. So one way that Instagram does this is through their Instagram meets. I've seen Instagram meets in Russia, China, London, and all over the nation, even in like Malaysia and India, Indonesia. And, there's, and I had an Instagrammer describe it this way. It is, it's a special thing when so many people from all walks of life can get together and to discover their creativity that they didn't know that they had or explore their creativity with other people of the similar interests. And so this happens all over the world. Our Instagrammers actually just create them themselves. It's nothing to do with Instagram. And they go on these photo walks and explore some interests together. Another way that we do to foster creativity in our community is through our hashtags. We have a weekend hashtag project like um, Double Take or like Puddlegram. We even have a hashtag for pet owners. And all, for all you animal lovers, this is one of our most liked hashtags, Weekly Fluff. It gives, obviously, a little laugh to the community every day. Um, and it's a way for pet owners to share their moments with their pets, their favorite moments, pets. We also have um, people who have started businesses on Instagram. And we call them Instapreneurs. This is Gabe Willis. He actually used to live in San Diego and he used to be a big time surfer. And then he moved to Oklahoma and there was no waves anymore. So he ended up going to skateboarding. He bought his first skateboard and in weeks it broke. So he started to fall in love with the old fashioned wooden skateboards. And so what happened is he wanted to make his own. So he started making his own and documenting it on Instagram. And all of a sudden all his Instagram followers were trying to find a way to where to buy these, these skateboards. So he created the account Straight. And through Straight, he directly sold these skateboards. And now, seven months later, he had four full-time full um, employees. And he's selling in stores and in online retailers. And then there's moments like these. This is Devin Allen. This photograph was shared, or posted and shared on Instagram. And he's been documenting what's been going on in Baltimore. Today, this photo is the cover of Time Magazine. Devin Allen is a 26-year-old amateur photographer who picked up a camera in 2013. And now he's on the cover of Time Magazine. It's moments like these, and so this is only a glimpse of Instagram and their community and what they have to offer. And I so humbly have the the chance to make these tools and features for all these people to be able to share their story and put it into their hands so that they could do things like this. And at the scale of millions and being an Instagram engineer, I'm able to create change at a larger scale. And that's my job every day. So let me go back to the definition of impact. To have a strong effect on someone or something. I'm going to cross out strong because we all know that impact starts small. And even when it starts small, it's sometimes so small and, and it's, it can be unclear when, until you look back. But when you strive for impact, you can directly also make an effect. And lastly, if you have a job like mine, you'd be able to create change at a larger scale. So the one thing that I've learned and throughout the years and I want to share with you is that it's never too late to strive for impact. It's never too late to change your master's or change your major. It's never too late to change your job. And if it means leaving your job in the recession, the worst recession in global history, and if it means no one believes in you, I say you do it. I believe in you, of course. I've done the same thing, so I will believe in you. And I just want to leave you with this question of how can you have impact? And better yet, how can you define impact? I'm Brina Lee, and I'm an Instagram engineer. Thank you.